Family, 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 what's going on? What's going on? I can see the, the live stream chat. Welcome, greetings, blessings. Hallelujah. If y'all can hear me good in that live stream chat, put that fire emoji. Let's start spamming that fire emoji real quick. What's up? Holy Ghost, what's up? If y'all could hear me, put that fire emoji. There go the fire emojis. There they go. Hallelujah. The most high, he's alive. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's a lot of fire emojis, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up, family? Man, tonight's going to be good, or tonight we're in the afternoon. This afternoon's going to be really good. Um, I have a brother in Christ, a friend, close brother of mine who's coming on here, Pastor Mario. Um, we're going to expose something that, that should have been exposed a long time ago. You know, as I was doing research online, I didn't see too many Christian articles really, like, breaking this down. Um... And even just videos, you know, exposing it. And my brother just did an interview recently um, at a gym with a, a young man of God. I say man of God because, you know, he he gave everything up, who um, exposed or, or who uh, repented of Santa Muerte, La Santa Muerte. And, um, you know, he had the tattoo on his neck and he had a whole bunch of witchcraft stuff and all that. And he gave it all up, man. And I think it's powerful that... um. That video is going viral right now. Viral. Man, God is so good. We're going to just speak about it. We're going to speak straight facts. We're not I'm not we're not on here to try to bring anybody down or make anyone look like a less of a person or be dishonorable. We're just here to talk about what the word of God says, um personal testimony and experience and just use logic. You know, in prayer, the Lord just said, use logic. It's logical. It's not like it's something where it's super, you know, deep and intricate to try to figure out. It's it's logic. Um, you know, the Bible says, you know, there's knowledge, there's understanding, and there's wisdom. We're going to reveal knowledge, and we're going to pray for you guys to receive understanding and wisdom in your heart. And I believe many people are going to repent. I believe many people are going to be healed. I believe generational curses are going to be broken. I believe people are going to be delivered from demons. I believe people are going to receive the Holy Spirit. This video, I believe, is going to touch millions of people and um, is going to expose something that is very, um, that is plaguing not only the Mexican community, but the world. Because it's not just Mexicans who do um, something what it is. It's a lot of people. When I was doing my research, it's all types of um, people. Before I get him on, before I get Pastor Mario on here, I just want to talk about really quickly what I personally know when it comes to Santa Muerte, personally. So when I was, so for those that don't know, I practiced witchcraft. I was on my way to be a dual inducted warlock. If you haven't seen my testimony, there's plenty of testimonial videos out there you can go watch. And it brings glory to Jesus because he saved me. But when I was in when I was in witchcraft, I remember being in San Diego, California, right? This is back before I got saved. And I remember um, I was I was eating brunch or lunch, I believe it was, and at the spot. And then, you know, afterwards, I, I seen a, a witchcraft store across the street. And it was a, it's called the Botanica. And I was like, oh, man, might as well go stop by. And at this point, I had the beads around my neck, the evil eyes. I had altars. I, had, I was all up, in, all up in that stuff. And I went into the, the shop, and I, and I went to go speak to the warlock, you know, the guy in charge. And it was a Mexican brother. And I remember just speaking to him, you know, about what I was already into. And he asked me, so what do you do? And I said, you know, I'm already into voodoo, santeria, you know, um, you know, actual Haitian voodoo, you know, santeria that comes from Puerto Rican roots, all that. And I remember this man saying, you're into Haitian voodoo. That's even stronger than what we do. And at that point, I was like, stronger, you know, like, what do you mean? He's like, look, it's, it's deeper rooted. You know, all the witchcraft comes from Africa. That, that, that Haitian voodoo is known as being one of the strongest forms of witchcraft. It's known. 
you know, in the uh, witchcraft community. And I remember like being like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm in it. Like I'm, you know, for those that don't know my testimony, I've been to Haiti. I've seen it done in front of me. I came back. I practiced it. I was, you know, I was in New Orleans practicing it. I was really on my way to become a dual inducted warlock. Um, a warlock in New Orleans was the one who was training me. Um, that was like, that was uh, discipling me on the other side. And we were planning on getting plane tickets to go to Haiti and New Orleans um, for me to be at the cemetery, you know, in both places, you know, and to get inducted, literally inducted. It's like a whole ceremonial induction where you got to sleep in the cemetery and do certain things, rituals and all these different things. And now that I'm in Christ, I know that's when demons enter you. That's when you, you know, you do those sacrifices. That's when you do whatever that they tell you to do to take on them demons. I mean... For those that don't know my testimony, I was taking herb baths. I had altars with many different statues. I had thousands of dollars worth of crystals. I was balancing chakras with pendulum crystals. I was putting salt in corners. Um, I wore the different beads, the red, the, you know, the red and white, the yellow and green, the blue, the, the red and black, the blue and white, like for the different deities. And man, what I noticed about all the witchcraft is it's all the same stuff. It's like the same. It's like different denominations. <laughs> it's like denominations for the other side. It's crazy. But they, it's crazy because in witchcraft, they have they have so much unity. Like, it's like they're, they're so, like, honorable to each other. It's it's because, you know, the Bible says a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So even Satan knows if he's divided, he will not stand. And it's sad how in the Christian community we see so much division, but we know the division in the Christian community is really the devil trying to, trying to stop what God is doing, but he can't stop what God is doing in this end times. God is bringing revival all around the world. So what I want to do right now is I want to get my brother on. I want to get my brother on. Um, we're going to get Pastor Mario on um, first. You got him on yet? Oh, what's up, man? You didn't even let me give him a welcome. What's up, man? God bless you, my brother. How you doing, man? Hey, man. God bless you, man. First of all, it's an honor to be on this platform, man. Love you, man. <laughs> Love you too, bro. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man. Um. My brother is a pastor at Kingdom Come in Dallas, Texas, Prayer Mountain. Y'all go check it out. Um, I want to ask some questions, man. Just your background when it comes to this. So you're full, you're full Mexican, right? 100% Mexican. 100% Mexican, yes, sir. 100% Mexican. A little, got, got a little bit of German in me, but mostly, you know, Mexican. Mexican. About 95%, Amen. I would say. Yeah. 95, amen. So you were, you were raised around Mexicans as well? Of course, yeah. Texas, you know, Cali and Texas, not Mexican states. Okay. And what part what city in Texas were you uh that were you born and raised? So I was raised here in Dallas. Uh, you know, it's a city called Oak Cliff. I grew up over here in the hood, in Oak Cliff, Texas. So yeah. Oak Cliff, man. I know about Oak Cliff. It's a real a rough area. Okay. And mm -hmm. um did you see Santa Muerte growing up in Oak Cliff? You know, I didn't really see it, but um you know, it was always around. I, I didn't, I didn't really pay attention to it. Now that I look back to it, I'm like, wow, that's what that was. I just thought it was like the Virgin Mary, you know, skeleton mode. You know, I didn't know, yeah. but that's what I thought, you know, but now that I think about it, that's what it was, was Santa Muerte. So pastor, you actually saw, and your, maybe your friend's houses or people like random people, neighbors, you saw that skeleton that looked like the Virgin Mary in people's houses. Well, I, next to my grandparents' house, actually, this lady had an altar, huge altar. I mean, you know, she had the Virgin Mary. She had all types of um, saints. And, you know, I, I can't recall if it was that one, but going to Mexico, I would always see, you know, uh, these, these Santa Muertes. I didn't really know what it was about, but I, you know, going to the Mexican food markets and going to all these places in Oak Cliff, you see them all over the place. Wow, man. Wow, 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 wow. Man, that's crazy, you know. Um, let, let's say a quick prayer before we begin. I believe it's about to get real, bro. I believe we're going to explain. I, I want to get into your testimony so you can let people know a little bit about, you know, where you come from as far as your testimony. We're going to play some videos. I want to play the video that um that went viral. Um, I want to play also a video that, you know, we personally have in San Diego and Chicano Park when they tried to actually jump us because we were exposing something with it. And I also want to play a video of a, of a man who, um, you know, is pretty much calling you out, you know, for, for being a pastor. So, but before we do that, can, can you say a prayer, Pastor Mario, just for everyone in the live stream Amen. and just before we begin? Yes. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for 
um, just this video, this broadcast, Lord, how it's going to reach many souls, Lord. People understand, you know, the Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So, Father, we're just trying to shine light, Lord. We're just trying to bring the truth so people can be set free. It's the truth that sets us free. So, Father, we're not here to condemn people. We're here to warn and just bring the truth in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I mean, I want to read a few verses, man. I said this to you yesterday, but I just want to read some because, you know, I, I, I see a lot in the comments when we expose witchcraft like Santa Muerte, voodoo, you know, evil eyes, crystals, people, oh, you know, they get into the, oh, you're judgmental. Oh, you're, you're judging me. You're mean. You're this, you're that. So I just want to break it down biblically on why we do this. You know, you know, we, everyone knows the, the scripture, you know, expose darkness, right? You know, we're supposed to expose darkness, but I want to just read. Um, some verses that really shed light on how much God hates idolatry. He hates it. Our father, Yahweh, hates it. So look at this. Exodus chapter 34, verse 13. God says, But break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down their Asherah poles. Do not worship any other God for the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, whose name is is jealous with a capital J is a jealous God. So another name for Yahweh is jealous according to the word of God. But Yahweh has many names. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Ra. Like we know this, right? But in the word of God, in Exodus 34, it says that his name is jealous with a capital J, meaning that is one of the attributes, the characteristics of our God, that he's jealous. He doesn't play. He hates That's fornication. Right. You see, we immediately when we talk about fornication, we tie it to having sex outside of marriage, which it is. But if you read the Old Testament, fornication was when the Israelites would, would, would begin to worship false gods. And God looked at it as adultery. It's spiritual adultery. When they would leave, when they would leave worshiping of Yahweh and they would go worship Baal, Molech, you know, Asherah, these different deities, God would get pissed off to the point where he would even allow neighboring nations' enemies to conquer them and to put them into captivity. And they would be enslaved for hundreds of years because of their rebellion. Deuteronomy 12, look at this, Mario, Pastor Mario. Destroy, this is Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2. Destroy completely all the places on the high mountains, on the hills, and under every spreading tree where the nations you are dispossessing worship their gods, lowercase g. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and burn their poles in the fire. Cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their name, their names from those places. So God, Pastor Mario, according to the word of God in the Old Testament, and God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Tomorrow, every day, he's the same. He doesn't change. And God would tell them not only to go destroy the people that were worshiping these false gods, but destroy all their altars, wipe it, burn it, get rid of it. Don't leave nothing. I, God hated it so much. He would say, don't leave nothing. So what, what do you feel about that, Pastor Mario, as far as Yahweh, our, our father? That's amazing, man. Um, you know, it kind of reminds me of King Asa when he came into reign. This man, I mean, he was obedient. He was a man after God's heart. What he do is he went and tore down every high place, every altar. He even kicked his grandma out of the palace. He said, hey, you brought this pole, this this pole that you're worshiping this thing. You got to go too." I mean, and, and, and God blessed him. God was with him. He went into war. God blessed it. God protected him. So, man, I just, yeah, that's it. And how did he fall according to the word of God? How did, how did King Asa fall? Mm -hmm. Man, he, he fell actually because... He started trusting God, but then what happened was that he failed to trust him. See, because he started trusting him in the first in, in the first part of his early years in in reign as a you know as as king, mm. but towards the end, he relied on his own strength. He relied on the strength of others, and man, he got a foot disease. He ended up dying in his foot in his bed. So he he stopped trusting in God and he started trusting he in other people. Trusting it's crazy. Other people. The same thing happened to, to Jehu, right? I was we were talking about that, like Jehu. God anointed Jehu. You know, I have a sermon yeah. on Jehu if you guys want to go watch it later. God anointed a military general. He was a killer. He was literally a killer. Like he was he was the type of dude that would go to war, kill a whole bunch of people, go to sleep and, and sleep peacefully. 
he was like a, a Old Testament G, a gangster, right? Like he he was he, he was he was a general in the army. He was a, he was strong. He was he was about that life. And when mm -hmm. Elijah ran away, you know, just from one word from Jezebel, you know, God sent one of the prophet's sons, not even Elijah, not Elisha, one of the prophet's sons, to go anoint him. And when he got anointed, he went out there, and it says that he rode on that chariot like a mad madman. And he went straight towards Jezebel. They tried to stop him. Like, is there any peace among you? He was like, man, he literally said, like, you, you, how could there be any peace when you're worshiping, when, when you're wor idolatry and witchcraft? And man, he, he just came with the bow, bam, hit him between the heart, between the chest, their heart. He didn't play. And then he went straight to Jezebel. Wow. Hey, to the eunuchs, if you don't, if you don't throw her off the roof, I'm going to kill you too. What happened? Her own eunuchs. Threw her off the balcony. She got eaten up by the dogs, just like God said she would. Only a few body parts left. I believe like her ankles and, and wrists or something like that. And Jehu reigned as king and was blessed for three generations. But he fell to the same very thing that he got anointed for because he got comfortable. Eventually, after time, God told him, go tear down the golden calves in Bethel. And because of his complacency, because probably he want he didn't want to he didn't want to cause friction between governmental leaders or people with money, he didn't do it. And what happened to him? He got taken out. So we see in the Word of God that like King Asa, King you know Je Jehu, you know these kings at the beginning would be on fire, and you know they'd be tearing down idols and altars and doing exactly what God said. But then eventually, when they got comfortable, they forgot. They forgot. They forgot what they got anointed and ordained for. And Pastor Mario, you know, I, I know that this is something the Lord, because I come from witchcraft, has called me to do because, you know, it's my testimony. So, you know, when I saw that video that went viral, uh, you know, where you exposing the La Santa Muerte, it really, man, it just, it, it excited me, bro. Because modern day, how we tear down idols and altars and mm. wipe things out clean is the way we're doing it, bro. The Lord has shown Amen. me that. Digitally, we're reaching so many people. I was in the gym today speaking to, our, you know, some of the men of God, some of the leaders. And I was like, man, you know, because one of the brothers was saying, hey, I had a dream about going international. God already showed me, right? And I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And I said, what if I told you I was preaching in China today? What if I told you today I was also preaching in Pakistan? I was also preaching in New York City. I was also preaching in California. What if I told you I was winning a soul yesterday in my sleep? And when they were, they, you know, they, they stopped and they were like, what are you talking about? Oh, you're talking about the digital spaces? I'm like, yes. Some people think when they get these mm, international dreams, wow. when they get these international dreams, oh, it means I got to be there in person. No, it doesn't mean that. We can reach wow. millions of people internationally through the internet. There's so much darkness. The enemy's using it for his own agenda to kill people, to take them down to hell, a second death. We're called to shed that light and expose this darkness. Let me read another scripture. Yeah. Let me read another scripture. Ju uh, Judges chapter two, verse two. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land, you shall tear down the altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? God gets so mad when people don't obey his voice when he says tear down. In the Old Testament, when he, when he, was, when he would say tear down an altar, go do this, go do that. God wanted it all out the way, done. He does, he's, a, he's a jealous God. He doesn't want to share us with anybody else. And with, the, with Santa Muerte, with Voodoo, with Santeria, people think, oh, I believe in God. You know, I saw the video of the brother who, you know, trying to call you out. Oh, he said, he said, you're a man of God. And he said, he's a man of God too. He said, but he, but he said, I'm a man of God too because I'm Catholic. Look, and I'm so glad he said that. What I want to do right now is I actually want to play that video so that people can see it. You know, um, just to give a little backstory. Again, Pastor Mario posted a video we're going to show you guys in a second that went viral. And then an actual uh, a man that um that worships La Santa Muerte felt some type of way and made this video about Mario. So I'm gonna play it and then I'm gonna break it down with my brother real quick. So let's play it. Go ahead, Kevin. Yes, sir. seen that you invited me to an interview first of all let me say something my brother listen i'm not here to offend you i respect what you do you're a man of god i'm a man of god i believe in god i'm catholic but at the end of the day you don't see me walking around doing videos judging people etc etc for the likes comments and views at the end of the day if you really 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 wanted to help anybody or especially this kid or anyone else 
you do it off the camera. ¿Tú me entiendes lo que te estoy diciendo? So I understand why you're doing it because I'm also on social media. But I don't live off the likes and the comments. So I don't go that hard the way you did. ¿Tú me entiendes? So at the end of the day, listen, you want to interview? How about you come down? Nos sentamos aquí en mi templo. Eh, ask me all the questions you want. Después yo te voy a predicar a ti y yo te voy a decir a ti por qué la muerte te perdonó la vida that night in the hotel. Cuando tú te estabas metiendo tu jodienda, que viste la luz. Because I know what I like you talking about. I'm an 80s baby kid. Tú me entiendes lo que te estoy diciendo. So I know that water you was drinking from. Let's get that straight. So you can lie to everybody in the world. Pero este caballero, negativo. But again, I respect what you do. But let me break something down real quick for you. You didn't see hell when you saw the light. You was already in hell when you was in that hotel room doing what you was doing. With nobody to talk to, with nobody to believe in you. All you had was your evil thoughts. Pero Dios y la muerte te salvó. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about it. Let's talk <laughs> about it, man. So, hey, Pastor, can I, can, I just, can I just talk about some things real quick? And I'm going to do it with love, Pastor. I'm going to do it with love. Amen, amen. So, first and foremost... When I um, saw that video and I went through his page very briefly, you know, for about two or three minutes, um, he seemed the way he speaks in Spanish. I believe he's Puerto Rican and um, and potentially from New York, you know, that tri-state area. Who knows? Just from the accent. And what it reminded me of, bro, was um, it reminded me of people I personally know um, that are you know still in that lifestyle of witchcraft. Selling, you know, smoking, smoking, drinking, still, you know, in the drugs. And, man, it just, the first thing I thought was, man, if this if this dude was in Christ, Pastor Mario, he'd be mm -hmm. a, pro man, he'd be a problem for the enemy, bro. He'd be on fire. I feel like he'd be apostolic, casting out devils, healing the sick, winning souls. I feel like he would be, man, he would be a real problem for the enemy. But, but what I noticed is he said that you're a man of God and he's a man of God because he's Catholic. And right there is just... Mm -hmm. It, it hurts my heart, bro, because me and you both, we were raised Catholic, right? You were raised Catholic as well? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, yeah, me too. And, you know, I, I, I didn't take it serious. I did it because of my parents. Mm -hmm. But, bro, what I noticed, right. man, is that um, in the Catholic Church, and when I, you know, it's, 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 there's a lot of idolatry. People bowing down to saints, to Mary, praying to Mary, praying to people as intercessory, uh, intercessory um, people, saints, instead of mm -hmm. going straight to God. And, you know, it always... It always made me feel a little weird. And then when I got into witchcraft, I was like, man, it's the same thing. And then when these warlocks and witches were training me up saying, hey, there's a lot of warlocks, santeros, brujos, and, and voodoo priests inside the Catholic Church because God knows that, that, that this is actually what's real. You know, mm. and, and, and it's, it's this whole deception. And they would say most Catholics don't know, but we know because we have this spiritual knowledge and mystery, mister, you know, whatever. So, man, it really was like, I, you know, it made me feel comfortable like, hey, you know, uh, you know, that's amazing because I was raised Catholic. So this is my roots. And that's what allowed me to dive deeper into voodoo and Santeria, because when I learned about how the Spanish came to Puerto Rico, how the French went to um, Haiti and how they enslaved the people, they raped the people and they made them bow down to the saints and worship them. Right. They used Jesus to divide and conquer, which is not God at all. It's that's satanic. They used the, mm -hmm. the Roman papacy. The Vatican is completely demonic. But this is this is something you can go research. It's clear as day. Satan used Roman Catholicism as a way to put to divide and conquer and control people in the name of Jesus. When it's not Jesus, it's 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 wrong. There's no there's nothing good about it. And with and when these people, these slaves, right, Mar Pastor Mario, the Africans mm -hmm. and, the, and the local Tainos in the Caribbean, when they would bow down to these saints to worship them. It, uh, to, to listen to their slave masters so they didn't get killed, what they would really be doing is worshiping their deities behind these statues. So let's say they were bowing down to, let's say, um, Lazarus. They would, the, in, in Haitian voodoo, the actual deity is Legba, right? Mm. They would they would bow down, and, and it's crazy because he's supposedly the gatekeeper as well, who has the keys, who allows you to have access to heaven or to hell. But the mm. Bible says that Jesus, when he died on that cross, he descended to the lower parts and took the keys of death and hell from Satan. So the one who has the keys is Yeshua. So when people think that Jesus is not the one who has the keys and they have to go through some other mediator, that's straight blasphemy. That's demonic. That's wrong. And I always felt weird, Pastor, because I'd be like, 
Why do we have to go through all these different deities to get to the to the highest power? I want to direct access to the highest power. So when this man says, you know, he's Catholic, he's a man of God, I believe that what he said from his heart, saying he's a man of God, I believe he really meant it. I don't believe he was lying. I think that he, like I was, is in deception. Exactly. I, and again, like I said, Pastor, I think that if he got saved, bro, filled with the Holy Ghost, which Powerful. he is in the name of Jesus, powerful man of god and and one another thing that he said um was what i saw in the caption is like hey you know that he gives candy to his deity and what do we do when we're passing around the offering plate look man we don't have to give we don't have to give candy um alcohol because i know they have to bring alcohol too to the Santa Muerte and all these, you don't have to bring food. You don't have to bring Rough none of this smoke. stuff. That is that is that is straight blasphemous. What these deities are doing is they're blaspheming God by still requiring sacrifices and rituals to be done because the word of God says that the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, was the last and final sacrifice. So in Catholicism, when you think that you have to still make sacrifices onto a deity. Even though even the Catholic Bible says that he was the last and final sacrifice, it's blasphemy against their own religion. Most Catholics, Pastor Mario, don't even read the Word of God. When I was in the Catholic Church, they never taught the Word of God. When I was in CCD and by, in the CCD classes, they never taught me. I celebrated Halloween. I celebrated Easter. I celebrated Christmas. You know, which is like it, it, it was just fun. I, I used to talk to girls and try to be a class comedian. They never taught me anything, bro. It was always like, trust the priest and that's it. Just go to confession. Just show up. Just go through the mass. Man, I'd be falling asleep. I, I, I would always feel like, man, this is a waste of time. And that's the problem is it's, all, it's religion. It's not relationship. And um, what's the last thing I want to say before I let you speak, man? I know I'm talking a lot. This gets me excited, bro. This gets me excited. <laughs> yeah, um, go ahead. He was talking about your testimony. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said something about, oh, you know, basically what he said was, you know, I, just like you, I drank from that water, cocaine, 80s baby, around, you know, around the coke era. I get it. Cool. Because your testimony is very powerful. And I actually want to, I want you to let people know your testimony in a second. And, you know, your testimony is powerful, how you literally nearly died in that, in that hotel room. If anything, you did die. And, and, and how they came and opened, like the, the, the worker knocked on the door and, how God literally like intervened. He says, and you, the light you saw, I've seen the light and you were in hell. He says, you were in hell. Let me say, let me just say this last thing for everyone that's watching. Hell is very real. And no matter what state of torment, evil mindset, whatever it is that you experience here on this earth, no matter how bad you think it is, it is nothing compared to the eternal torment right. in hell. Hell is a real place, man. I'm telling you, hell is a is it's complete like separation. God ain't there at all. At least here on this earth, his spirit is poured out upon all flesh. You can experience God when you love your, your son, when you love your daughter, when you love your mom and your dad. Even if you're not a Christian, you can experience love because I love my mother. I loved her before I even got saved. And I would die for her. That's agape love. You can experience the love of God. Even as, as a non-Christian, even as a warlock and a witch, you can experience love. But I'm telling you, I'm gonna tell you something. In hell, there is no more experiencing of anything. There's no more chances. There's nobody in hell right now that's saying, oh, forget, uh, I, I don't, I don't deserve to be here. I should be in heaven. No, everybody in hell knows that they got all the chances they got. And what they're asking for is, please forgive me, but it's too late. God gives us our chance here on earth. It's a test when we come here. If you study near-death experiences, I love them, NDEs. There's actually a powerful movie that just came out. It's called After Death, and it's a documentary on NDEs, which is not biased at all, but it's so it's powerful that so many people came to Christ because all these people, who, different religions and practices, when they died, they met Jesus. They Some people went to hell, and they'll tell you it is the most excruciating torment ever. It is... Pastor Mario, when he was in that hotel room, coked up, about to die, was not in hell. He was about to go to hell. <laughs> so, Pastor, tell, 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 tell the people a little, about, a little bit about your testimony and what happened. Amen. You know, I, one thing I want to say first is, is this is we're not against Catholics. We're not against uh, people. People are not our, um, our enemies. Uh, our battle is not against flesh and blood. You know, I do believe that there is a lot of Catholics that truly love Jesus. And but the problem that we have with the Catholicism, with the Catholic Church, is that a lot of the, you know, South America, a lot of these Hispanics, 
they don't read the Bible like you said. They don't. They're not getting in the word for themselves. So what they see is they they go and worship the Virgin Mary and the saints instead of giving the worship that is only due to God. So that's the problem. That's where the Catholic Church has gone astray. Is that people are literally worshiping saints, worshiping the Virgin Mary, and now they're worshiping La Santa Muerte, and they think that it's a part of you know their uh, their religion. But yeah, man. Um, one thing about uh, my testimony is that yeah, I wasn't in hell. I was here. You know, uh, I was, uh, you know, a uh, quick little testimony. I'll be quick with it. Um, towards the end of my, you know, my life in the world was, uh, I was broken, hurt, rejected, hated myself. You know, um, I, I hated who I'd become. I seen myself so low. So I kept going lower. I see myself as the worst dad in the world, the worst husband. So I said, I might as well just go lower. I might as just well go lower. So I was in that hotel room. I did a lot of cocaine, cocaine for about um, 10 years, a little over 10 years, alcohol, mm. cocaine, I would go on, you know, drug binges, uh, for, uh, for days, you know, my wife couldn't, you know, she, she couldn't, um, she couldn't reach me cause I'd be gone for three, four days at a time. Mm, and I just out, show hey, up the house. Out, shout out to Tiffany. <laughs> shout out to Tiffany. Yeah. This, this headset's kind of like echoing back. So it sounds like, I hope I'm not screaming at the mic. Am nah, I good? You're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're good to go. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I was in that hotel room man. I was lost. I was broken. I, you know, the first time I died was because I actually almost, uh, killed myself. I, I, I was suicidal. I grab. I remember grabbing my belt, putting it around my neck. I said, how am I going to do this? I ain't never done this. So I, I don't know how to do it. So I finally went to go turn on the bathtub. And, uh, when I turned the bathtub on, I just felt super nervous. I felt like somebody was watching me and I felt like there was literally somebody in that room watching me. I said, man, somebody's going to walk in this room or somebody's watching me. I went to go look through the little peephole. And as I went through to look through that peephole, there was a guy standing right outside my door. And um, hey, can you guys see me? Hold on one second. What's going on? It says eternal. It says. Uh, oh, his camera. His camera's overheating. OK, no worries. OK. Hey, so and the enemies, man. Yeah, we, <laughs> oh, 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 hey, we're going to we're going to continue this live stream. Hey Amen. Can, can you hear me though? Yeah, I can hear you. Keep continue. Keep going. Okay. Hey Amen. So, um, I don't know if it's that that light or whatever, but um, so yeah, I was uh, I was in that room. There was a guy standing right outside my door, mm -hmm. and um, he was standing right outside my door, and uh, I see my doorknob start opening, opens mm. my door. I stop it with my foot, and I'm like, Yo, what, what in the world? What's going on? He's like, Dude, uh, somebody just called me about a broken door. Um, he just called about a broken door. And I said, I've been in here by myself all day. There's no way. Close the door and I lock it. I was scared, super mm. nervous. Uh, just got really scared. I was like, yo, that was crazy. I knew somebody was watching me. Mm. And fast forward uh, towards the end of the night, you know, I'd been drinking, snorting cocaine for three, four days, hadn't slept. Mm. Um, I finally, I finally just uh, did a, you know, my, my body was actually rejecting the cocaine, uh, was rejecting alcohol. I couldn't even put alcohol in my mouth without throwing up stomach acid. So I literally had to hold my nose and put alcohol in my mouth. And um, and the my nose was bleeding profusely a lot. I would hit a bump of Coke and keep bleeding, keep bleeding. It wouldn't stop bleeding. Mm. So um, finally, uh, I, I did a big line of cocaine. I, I sat back on the bed and and I just felt as if my soul was leaving my body. I just I heard my heart Ooh, in my ears. I just, got, I just got this, man. I just felt the Holy Ghost. Ooh. Yeah, I just I, I felt I felt the, my heart in my ear. Right. And um, and everything almost became quiet. And I just felt like if I was getting sucked backwards and darkness was just covering me. But then I came back and I was like, yo, I don't want to die. I, I, I That's what I knew that was happening. I was like, I'm, my soul was leaving my body. Didn't want to die. Fast forward, God had mercy on me mm. and uh, didn't die. Wow, yeah. wow, 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 wow. Praise God. And now you're a powerful, powerful man of God, man. That's Man, Kingdom Come is a powerful ministry where revival is breaking out on that mountain, man, that's, a, that's our brother ministry. And Pastor Mario is being used by God mightily, mightily man. Yeah, we, we see the um, the cameras overheating. It's all good. It's, it's um, you know, my brother Mario is getting into the live streaming and, you know, he's got to get used to it. It's, it's, it's all good. What I want everyone to do is let, let's make the enemy mad and let's let's start spamming that, that chat while he gets that camera on point. Everyone spam the chat with fire emoji. Start liking it. Start liking it. Because we're about to get deep into to exposing Santa Muerte. So everyone, Man. start putting that fire emoji. Start liking it. Start liking it. We're going to get Pastor Mario back on. He's there. You guys can hear his audio. We just got to get the, um, the camera on point in a second, which is all good. No worries. No worries. 
Huh? I'm here. Can you can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, we can yeah, you. We're good. yeah, yeah, we're good to go. Hey, there we go. Hey, man. Okay, so I want to just read some stuff, man, um, about Santa Muerte that I that I found um personally. So just for those that don't know what Santa Muerte is, Santa Muerte is the worshiping of the dead. It's the worshiping of a dead saint. Um Santa Muerte, from what I've researched, was a male and became a female. And what people do is they worship this deity who's supposed to be like the deity of death because what they believe is they're just accepting something that's inevitable, which is death for everybody, which death is for everybody. Everyone will die. And they believe that by worshiping this deity, they can get things like protection and and good luck. And man, what's crazy is I didn't know this till I was doing research, Pastor, is that a lot of the cartel... Um, they make sacrifices and worship this deity to protect their drugs, to protect their bit, their the 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 business, all that stuff. I didn't know that, bro. How big Santa Muerte really is in the in the Mexican community and in the drug community. So Santa Muerte followers look up to her as as someone who helps her with many tasks, uh, helps them with many tasks, such as being blessed with love, money, employment, health, and so on. Man, it's the same thing in Voodoo and Santeria. And this is some of the things that you must do in order to make contact with Santa Muerte. You must perform rituals, prayers, altar worship, and it has to be in darkness. Or most of the time it's in darkness or at night since this is when she's most powerful. So logically, they're worshiping a deity that's most power, powerful at night. Who, who operates? The Bible is very clear that we're, we're the children of the, of the light, of the day, right? So mm -hmm. it's obvious that darkness, the, the, the demonic, you know, witching hour, 3 a.m., right? That's, that's a lot. 3 a.m. is a time when a lot of witches and warlocks are doing rituals, seances, putting word curses, you know, sacrificing, you know, like worshiping their demons at the, at, at the altar, at their altar. 3 a.m. is the witching hour. So, you know, that's why a lot of people who, um, who prophetically intercede... You know, prophets will get up at 3 a.m. God will wake certain people up at 3 a.m. to pray because a lot of times there's a whole witchcraft attack coming against the ministry that you're part of or leading or your family. And God will just have you, you know, get up and pray. And what's what's crazy um, or, or what's beautiful about being a Christian is that these witches and warlocks, Pastor Mario, and you know this, they got to stay up all night bathing in blood and doing all these sacrifices and putting candy and food and alcohol for all these hours, Pastor, weeks, days. You know, and John, John Ramirez talks about this a lot too. But you know what's crazy? As a Holy Spirit-filled Christian, all we got to do is pray in the Spirit and we can dismantle and destroy every demonic attack against us in 10, Amen. 15 minutes. Amen. We just wake up. Okay, thank you, Father. Remando Roboco say, I cancel every demonic attack in Jesus' name. My family's protected under the blood. I declare right now and decree that, that no weapon formed against me will prosper every time. You know what I'm saying? And we just declare and decree the word. We pray and it's done. What that what just That's took right. them three, four weeks, a month, a week, whatever it was, all these sacrifices, all this time, all this, all this, all this, all this, all this worship onto their deity, we destroy in literally seconds. Mm -hmm. Because we are worshiping the highest power. And the Bible says we have power over all the enemy's power. The Bible says when Jesus Christ died on the cross, Come he on. disarmed every principality and power. The Bible says that literally the devil's under our feet. Like we step on his neck. We have authority because of what Jesus Christ did. Not in That's our right. own might and strength because it ain't about us. It's about who our God is. Our God, the name of Jesus Christ. Demons tremble. Even they believe and they tremble. You see, people wonder, how do, how do you have the boldness? You know, Pastor Rich and Pastor Mario to go into witchcraft stores or or to do this. It's because we know that our God is all powerful and he's given us through inheritance, through the reconciliation that we received to our Heavenly Father through the blood of the Lamb, through, through, through right. believing in Christ. We received all the power that Jesus Christ has. We are adopted. Right. We are co-heirs. We are we are literally high priests. We have governmental authority here on this earth over every demonic kingdom we are the highest ranking kingdom here on earth the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven same thing when we walk into an area anywhere we step we own it we take authority because of that's what right. jesus christ did for us on the cross that's why when we go into a witchcraft store we're not scared that's why when we go to a muslim mosque we're not scared that's why we can go to a buddhist temple hindu temple wherever wherever we can go to wherever. strip clubs we can go to inside nightclubs we just posted a video going to nightclub. anywhere we go 
in the name of Yeshua, we go in the name of our Lord and Savior, we go in, in his name, we have authority. It's like, Mario, I would say it's like the U.S. government going against a local gang. You got a local gang in Oak Cliff, Texas, a little, let's say a, a, little, a local Rolling 60s gang. Man, you know, Rolling 60s, Crips and Bloods, like they have, they have, they have power. They got guns. They, they're moving drugs. They got money. They, they, they're, they're organized, and, and they do got power. That's right. But if wow. the U.S. government decides, hey, we're done with this stuff, they send one fighter jet, it's dismantled, it's done. They send the FBI, it's done, raids, and it's over. Even a rolling 60s gang leader knows when the feds come in, we're, we're, we're dropping. It's either we dropping or we're going to get into a shootout and, and, and we're going to die because we can't beat them. You see what I'm saying? And that's how the kingdom of God is. We mm -hmm. are. It's just like Philip. Come on, let him know, Pastor. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like Philip. I mean, he, he uh, what did he do? He went to Samaria. You had Simon the Sorcerer. I mean, he was awing the people for many years, it says, you know, doing all types of uh, false miracles, miracles, you know, healing, whatever it was. And and then Philip just went over there, casted that demon out of him. Man, we I have the same power. Come on, Pastor. Hey, I it, love that. You know, and it, go continue, ahead. Continue. I'm sorry. Good. Continue. No, what I was saying is like, you know, like when, you know, when I seen this young man that, that, uh, that repented for La Santa Muerte, it wasn't because I was trying to expose it. It was, I didn't even know that he was, you know, that he was worshiping her. But I, what I do know is that when I started talking to him and I, and I realized that he was uh, about that witchcraft lifestyle, um, that the same that the same spirit that rose Jesus was in me, cast mm. that demon out. Mm. So, so, so what happened, Pastor? Like, can you explain what happened? Like, like what happened with the encounter? What ended up happening afterwards? Just, and then before we, and then we'll, after that, we'll play the video. Amen. So I was at the gym, uh, seeing that, seeing that young man when, uh, when I pulled up to the gym, God highlighted him to me. So I went to go hoop. And then, um, before I left, the Lord said, the Holy spirit said, look to the right, look to the right. It was that young man playing basketball by himself. He said, go talk to my son. And I, and I was, I was tired. I mean, I was exhausted. I was sweaty. I was like, man, I, you know, sometimes you just, you just want to go home, shower, get some rest, but obedience is important. So I, um, uh, I went over there and I said, hey, man, I just want to let you know that God's hands on your life, that he loves you, you know, something down that line. And he was kind of taken back. I said, are you surprised? He says, well, you know, not really. And I said, well, what do you believe in, man? He said, I believe in God. He says, I believe in the devil, too. He said, I believe in something else. I said, really? He's like, yeah, I believe in the Santa Muerte. And I said, wow. I said, you know what? Can we can we have an interview? Can I interview? Can I ask you questions about this? This, uh, you know, this the Santa Muerte. Wow. He said, sure. So then that's when I started interviewing him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just, the Holy spirit moved, Come he on. repented. He ended up sending me that, uh, that video of him, throw, you know, bagging up the Santa Muerte. Come on. Um, he's supposed to be coming out to service this Saturday today, you know, so you guys keep Vaughn in y'all's prayers. His name's I'm Vaughn. believing that he's going to be baptized. Yeah. Well, yeah. His name's Vaughn. That's what he says he goes by. So. So, Father, we just lift up Vaughn right now. Lord, he yeah. will come to service, get baptized, deliverance. He'll get filled with the Spirit of God. Lord, thank you for his repentance. Lord, thank you that the angels are surrounding him and taking charge. Father, this is your son who's going to have a powerful testimony to, testimony to win many souls. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Mario and his obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to actually play the video of Vaughn, the interview that went viral on, um, on the Internet, on Instagram, TikTok, and other platforms so that you guys can see where this all started. Go ahead. I pray to La Santa Muerte. She's the angel of death. She fell from the heaven of gates too. You can use her for witchcraft and stuff, but my promise was if she can get me out on probation, I will get her tattooed right here. So that's her face right there? Yeah, that's her whole face right here. And I, her name right here. And uh, I spent time with her, because I have uh, statues of her next to my bed where I sleep, so I put stuff out for her. I put like candy, sweets, treats. She's not good. You know why? Because she does evil too. God has no evil in him. He will never cast a shifting shadow. He's not ever going to change on us. He's good and that's it. If you're praying to an evil, what are you going to attract? Evil. That's a lie that you have to commit these promises. You, by the blood of Jesus, you can break that. You know how you say you fellowship with the holy death? You can do that with the highest power, bro, who can protect you and give you true peace all your life. You ain't got to give them candy. It's just your heart. I got to give you candies. I got to give you alcohol. I got to give you this. And if not, then I'm going to get killed. That's not love. The Bible that says that this is love. Love gives itself away without expecting nothing in return. God gave himself for you. He's not expecting you to do nothing for him. He just wants your heart. That's it. Lose, man. Thank you for the life that you have for him, Lord. 
the life that he's gonna live now in you. Thank you for what you're gonna do in this man's life. You love your son. Thank you, Father. thank you. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, Jesus. Man, that's powerful. Even at the end, uh, Pastor, when you uh, you know, when you when you hugged him, man, it's just that's beautiful, bro. That's 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 the kingdom of God coming in power and love. That's true. You know, and 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 the power of God is 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 through His gospel, through His word, through His um His love, through His yeah, man, through miracle, through healing, through every everything, deliverance. Man, God uses whatever He needs to use to get yeah, man. through to His Son. And you're right, bro. Like that's that's God's Son. No matter what, even if He got like Santa Muerte tatted on His neck and He's been bowing down to her or whatever, man. Like God still loves Him, and you 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 displayed. Yeah. The truth, which I love how you um you know, you use the word of God in a way where it was receptive. You didn't, you know, start quoting, you know, scriptures in a way where he was like, What the heck is going on? You used the word of God to where he could understand it. And then at the end, man, you prayed for him and you just you allowed him to experience yeah. the love of God, the presence of God. Amen. And, and you know, like one thing I want to say is this is like you know, that, that young man said he was in prison. You know, he was in jail, in and out of jail for two years. His mom had been in prison for 45 years, which I actually, if you watch the full video on YouTube, I prophesied over his mom that she'd be out in two years. So let's stand on that that prophetic word that she'll be out in two years, that she'll be on fire for God. She'll be casting demons out. Come on. She'll be laying hands on the sick. So will he. And uh, But yeah, so he he told me that he, he prayed to her, you know, because he was tired of being in there. He said, hey, I'm going to pray to her. I'm going to make these promises. People, you know, they, they make promises to La Santa Muerte to, you know, to get, um, you know, all, you know, to, to, so that things can go well for them in life so that they can get good things out of it. Right. Oh. So he made this promise. He said, I'll tap, I attach your face on my neck and I'll put your name on me and I'll take care of you. Whatever that looks like. I don't know what taking care of La Santa Muerte means, but I'm guessing giving her offerings, worshiping her. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so he, he said that that's what he was going to do. And that very same day he got out, you know, at that day that he made that promise that he would tatter up on his neck and, and he got out. And one thing I want to say is uh, I've, I've seen in the comments little, I've really, I don't really check the comments, but I've seen some pop up and a lot of people say, she's not evil. She's not evil. She does good. She does good. You know? And what I want to say is this, because, um, because people are really lost, you know, they truly believe that she's good. And um, some people believe that she rebelled from God, that she was a fallen angel. You know, first of all, you're not good if you rebel against the one that is good. Right. Mm, come on. Um, and just because she does good to you doesn't mean she's good. There's a lot of things that that do good. That doesn't that doesn't mean it's good in in of it of itself. You know, so just mm. like me, like cocaine was good to me. It gave come me on. peace. You know, alcohol gave me peace. But the the end result was what destruction was death. I mean, I was gonna die if I if I kept going down that way. My heart probably would end up stopping. You know, um, it, it gave me peace for the moment. It was good at the moment. You know, it was good for my depression because I was depressed. And what alcohol did, it satiated that feeling. Mm -hmm. What cocaine did, it satiated that feeling. It doesn't mean it's good. You know, so people say, well, you know, I worship to her to, you know, to you know, let me out of jail. And she answered it. So that must mean she's good. Mm. No, the devil. We can't forget. Like, that's why we have to read the word of God. And and we have we, we got to remember that the devil offered Jesus the kingdoms of this world. He said, hey, I'll offer you all this. If you what, just bow down and worship me. And that's what people are doing with La Santa Muerte. They're bowing down and worshiping her. Matter of fact, yesterday I seen a video of an old lady in Mexico who said, you don't have to, or it was actually a younger lady. This is a different video. She said, you don't have to give to the Santa Muerte really nothing. It's not that she wants things from you. All she wants is your all your love, all your affection, and all your time. And what is that? That is your worship. So what she's mm. asking you, is to worship her, just like Satan was asking Jesus, hey, I'll give you everything. Just worship me. Ooh, so, but, but but what's the end result of worshiping a demon? Because that's what it is. It's a demon, come guys. On, preach. So if you're here, it's a demon. What's the end result? It may be good at the moment. It may you may get money. You may be like that, you know, that big dude, that Puerto Rican dude that called me out. You may be <laughs> riding in a Corvette in a in a sim in a big truck like he is with a bunch of gold chains. But what is it to a man if he gains the whole world but, but loses soul. his own soul? So, you know, it may be good at the moment, but the end result is hell. Why? Because you're worshiping a demon. 
Jesus, the whole reason he came is so that you can have access to the to the most high, to the father, to Yahweh. And it's like you said, a slap in the face. Come on, Pastor. That's powerful. Man, that's powerful, man. I saw I saw someone in the chat, Pastor, that was saying, right now, as as we're speaking, she's throwing away all her tarot cards. Wow. Come on, wow. Jesus. Wow, wow, wow. And I saw Mama Spars in, in the uh in the chat too. Chef Chef Zo. <laughs> What's up? Amen. God, it's, but um I want to say something. So you said you, you you there's a few things. Um you were wondering, like, I don't know what he's doing, you know, like uh, you know, taking care of La Santa Muerte by his bed, right? So I'll tell you what it is, just for people that are probably wondering that too. And I know this because of like you, just for those who don't know, I was in witchcraft. You have to create a demonic atmosphere. Everything's about atmospheres. So what happens with these deities, first and foremost, La Santa Muerte is a demon, right? A, a fallen mm -hmm. angel potentially. And the, the actual fallen angel could only be at one place at one time. Yahweh, right? God is the only one who's omnipresent, meaning he could be he could be anywhere, everywhere at once. But these demons could only be, these fallen angels could only be at one place at once, but they have a camp. They have, it's, like, it's like the military. So like the U.S. Navy, you got the Navy and there's a whole bunch of sailors within the Navy. But if you see them in their uniform, you identify them as a Navy sailor. You, like, you see them, you know them by what they're wearing, their characteristics, how they march. Right. You know them as... So like just like the Jezebelic kingdom, there's one Jezebel spirit, but she has a whole bunch of other Jezebel spirits working mm. under her. So it's the same thing with this deity. So the, the Santa Muerte is a specific demon, right, who has a bunch of lower, like, lower ranking demons that work for her, he, whatever the demon is. It could be Jezebel. Could, like More than likely, it's probably Jezebel. And mm -hmm. working, and I remember one time, Pastor Mario, um, you, you you said something about Mary and Jezebel. We'll talk about that later. But but um, how people worship the Virgin Mary and stuff like that. I remember, mm -hmm. yeah, but I'll, I'll say this. He has to create a demonic atmosphere within his his room. So by the re the way he does that is through worship, like you said. So he has to put the sacrifices of candy, um, the sacrifices of cigarettes. And I remember being in the botanicas, bro, and they would take my beads and dip it in Florida water, and they would be smoking. It could be weed. It could be cigar, cigarette. And they would blow the smoke on the beads with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Florida water and sometimes even alcohol and different herbs, and they would have to soak it. They would have to bless it. Right, bless it for me to put it on and wear it, and I would, I, and I would, mm -hmm. when I put it on, I could smell it. What that was doing was creating a de demonic atmosphere around my neck through ritualistic worship. So that's what these people have to do. They have an to altar. create that demonic atmosphere. It's an altar. It literally is an altar. Mm -hmm. They have it's to create altar. that demonic atmosphere within their home and continue to keep keep it up. And it's crazy because everything the devil do does is perversion of God's kingdom. Right, what God does. Because obviously mm. Satan and the fallen angels, they know how it is in heaven. They got casted out of heaven. So all they're That's doing right. is perverting what we're supposed to be doing as Christians. So as Christians, right. we're supposed to be worshiping the Lord, creating an altar in our home. And it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a in physical a altar. You can't have one, though. It's not a problem. But it's a spiritual altar onto the Lord, our, our temple. We, we're, we are an altar. Yes. When we worship God, when we're constantly in prayer, praying without ceasing, focused on God and our mind and heart, constantly in fellowship with him, going to church, you know, doing those things that we need to do, kingdom principles, that the, being obedient, we're a walking atmosphere of heaven. Brothers and sisters, we are a walking atmosphere of heaven. That's, right. That's why when we walk into places, people get drawn onto us and they don't even know why. I don't even know mm -hmm. why I just felt led to give you my entire life. <laughs> you're, you, Pastor, you've experienced that, right? You're, a, you're, you're at the gym, we're just chilling, and then someone just gets drawn onto you. Now they want to tell you everything about their life. Yeah, that's and, right. And they get led yes. to Christ. It's because it's not, it's not Mario. It's the atmosphere he's carrying, which is heaven, which is the glory of God, which is literally the Holy Spirit. As he's walking, the Holy Spirit is, 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 is his atmosphere. Yep. The Bible says that, he, that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and, and, and with us. Mm -hmm. So, bro, it's, yeah. it's, 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 that's what they're doing. It's perversion of what God does. They do the same thing in voodoo, bro. They have to have the altars in their home or the altars in, in their car, the altars in the, in the cut. And it's crazy because all the witchcraft is always hidden, bro. You, you ever look at witchcraft? It's always hidden. Some people are bold and they don't care, but most of the time they, it's a lot of hidden stuff. And just like Freemasonry, like all these different practices, they're hidden. Look, in Christianity, we ain't got nothing to hide. We're out in the open with it. We let people know mm. about Jesus. We we preach the gospel. We evangelize. And another thing he, the brother said in the video was, you know, you know, oh, you did it for the likes and comments. Look, I'm going to say this. Yes, Pastor Mario did it for the likes and comments. Yes, I do it for the likes and comments because we want to reach the nations. 
-hmm. We don't do it to be popular and famous. We do it because we want to win souls. And we know that inevitably those things come. The fame. The Bible even says it, that Jesus grew in stature. He grew in wisdom. He grew in fame. He was he, the, the multitudes would draw onto them because he was casting out demons, healing the sick, moving in a way that they never seen. That's what happens as a, as a Holy Spirit filled man and woman of God. That's what's supposed to happen. As you grow in the faith, that's exactly what's supposed to happen, and so souls can get saved. It happened to Jesus. So yes, brother. Um, for the if he's watching, we you know we do do it for that. We want to go viral onto the glory of God. We give glory to God for it, so we can penetrate the internet for His glory. Amen. Um, was there anything else I want to say? Oh yes. So. You know, in, in in the Word of God, it talked about it talks about child sacrifice, right? And how in the Old Testament, onto like God, deities like Moloch and Baal, they would have to sacrifice their firstborn child. And in a lot of these religions, especially like Santa Muerte and Voodoo, that stuff does happen, bro. That stuff literally happens. There's human sacrifice. I was just reading that. I was reading that in the cartel. They're lit. They like they take pride. And like and murder, yep, and killing onto Santa Muerte. They literally take pride in it, like we're doing it for this deity so we can get more protection. How is that good? How is killing someone, murdering someone, shortening their life on this earth even good at all? It's not good. There's nothing it's good not. about it. Oh, well, it's part of life. Yeah, death is part of life, but murder is, is something that we all know. You don't have to even be a Christian to know it's wrong. Oh, how is it wrong? If and your mother, for that. if your daughter, if your cousin, someone you love got murdered, you would be pissed off. If it wasn't bad, then you wouldn't be pissed off. We all mourn. We all cry. We all, we all care when someone gets murdered because we know it's wrong. People have a destiny mm -hmm. to fulfill. You know why people are scared of death? Because or, or don't want to die. They have fear of death. It's because they they haven't fulfilled something that they know they have to fulfill here on earth. That's why people don't want to die, even though we all know we're gonna die. So what I want to do is yeah, talk about what happened in um, Chicano Park, bro, in San Diego. I talked I talked to you briefly about it. So, you know, we were out in San Diego recently. It was a powerful revival, bro. Hundreds of people got saved. Jesus Christ was glorified. It was a deliverance. Demons were casted out. People were healed miraculously, bro. Miracles we've honestly, wow. a level that we haven't seen yet. The Holy Spirit moved powerfully, bro. Thank you, Jesus. And, um, by the way, Pastor Mario, in, his, in, in the ministry that the Lord is allowing him to shepherd at Kingdom Come, they cast out demons. They see people that are that are sick healed regularly. They see miracles, signs, and wonders all the time. So if you're in the Dallas, the DFW area, you pull up Prayer Mountain. Go see his social media later for all the times. Y'all got service tonight at what, 7? At 6 p.m. If you're in the area, yeah, pull up. It's powerful. But, bro, we were out there in San Diego. We were evangelizing before the revival. I believe it was a Wednesday or Thursday. I'm not sure. And, you know, the revival was on Friday and Saturday. We went there earlier. It was actually Thursday. We went there earlier on purpose to evangelize and get some footage, you know. Um, and, bro, it was powerful. We went into a witchcraft store. A witch got touched by the Holy Spirit. We're going to release that video soon. We were doing teaching videos. It was The whole day was extremely powerful, anointed. And, you know, we were about to go back to the Airbnb. And I remember on the way, we're, we're in the car, we're driving back. And I just heard the Holy Spirit, you know, you know, quicken me. Hey, one more. One more stop. I'm like, Okay. Where? You know, go on Yelp, look up scenic views, right? So I go on Yelp, and I'm looking at all these scenic views in San Diego, and there's many. And I'm scrolling, and I see one in particular where there was a bunch of murals. And I was like, ooh, that was highlighted. And I was like, man, we got to go there. And I remember back when I lived in San Diego, you know, back five, six years ago, I would go to this taco shop right across from this park where they had a bunch of murals. And I'm like, man, they got a taco shop there. Maybe we can go get an interview or two out there and then get some tacos. You already know when I'm in Dallas. Mario takes me to the best taco shop. What, what's the name of that spot again? <laughs> Salsa Verde, man. If you're in Dallas, man, shout out to Salsa Verde. Powerful. Uh, it was, it was a queso, queso, queso frito, queso frito. Pahi queso. Bro, you eat it, you're going to speak in tongues immediately in the name of Jesus. But <laughs> Remando. So anyways, we go, bro. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm already in the flesh, like tired, bro. I want to go home, spend time with my wife and kids. But the revival's the next day. We got to prepare in prayer. And, bro, we get there, man. And I'm like, oh, look at the murals, you know, whatever. Let's just go out there. Let's get a few interviews. Come on. I'm, you know, with Benji, Pastor Benji. I'm with Fred. I'm with Berean, the video guy. I'm like, let's just go real quick. They're like, all right, bet. So we pull up. We get out the car, bro. As soon as we hit the park, we see the murals. But then we see a whole bunch of altars, bro. 
I'm talking about like, bro, like I've never seen these many altars set up in a public area or even in a witchcraft store. I've never seen these many. When you go to witchcraft stores, you'll see like one, two. Even one time when I was in Little Haiti in Miami, I went to a hidden little like Haitian voodoo spot where they were supposed to do a ritual and all that. And I seen like maybe like six or seven, maybe eight max. But bro, there was like 20 to 30 altars. It was like innumerable. We, we couldn't even count them all. They were all over. And we seen tents. People literally had tents behind the altars. Man, hey, everyone put a fire emoji in the chat and like the video so it can go viral. It's about to get real. It's about to get real. Someone said they can't hear you. He's not even talking. Yeah. <laughs> They can't hear Pastor Mario. He's not even talking. Can, can they hear me now? Can y'all hear? If you can hear Pastor Mario, put a fire emoji. Go ahead, speak Pastor Mario. Hello, 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 hello. There you go. Fire. Fire. <laughs> so anyways, um, put a fire emoji if you can hear him. And, and we'll see in a second. So anyways, we're, um, you know, we go out there and then we see all these altars, bro. And I'm talking about like, they weren't like the small altars or like the regular size altars in like botanicas and like people's houses. Right. They were like, bro, like human like like giant size altars like we've seen the the wow. the what's it called like in um in puerto rico in, in puerto rico we call it a uh a, a palong where they where they where you know when you mash the ingredients yeah like, it's called a palo and it was a big one bro like this big bro and it was in front of these people's tents and they had the pictures of their passed away relatives their dead relatives we saw the candles we saw the different witchcraft items the candy the food the alcohol like bro we saw everything like it was willing for all this and i'm like bro what is going on is this even real and i'm like bro let's let's get out the camera let's expose it i don't know what's going on but let's do it and bro we take out the camera and then a young man comes by you know god bless him and was just like hey bro you can't record here and I'm like, man, this is a public park. He's like, no, we own this. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You own this park? Hold up. And I'm just, I'm, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So if I call like the city, if I call the cops, if I call right now, they'll tell me that you guys own this park and I got to leave? He was like, oh, you, you, you would call the pigs. And I'm like, in my mind, I wasn't even like that. I was just saying like, if I needed to check. And then he was like, he just wild out and left. And I'm like, so I was like, I was like, bro, we're going we're gonna to record. Like, you can't. You can't stop us. And then we found out that it was the day of the dead. It was like the Dia de Muerte. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, the day of the dead. I'm not really educated on it at this point. I'm like, man, this is about to be crazy. It's the day of the dead. This is all I know from voodoo and Santeria. This is the same thing on a, on a bigger scale. And I'm like, bro, let's let's just record it. Let's expose it. It's a public park. And then I went to this um this uh, one of the tents and this lady came out. She was really nice. Um, probably a witch. I'm not sure. And she was just like, hey, I'll do an interview. You know, I was like, okay, cool. And we're about to do the interview, bro. We're about to do the interview. And then out of nowhere, you know, me, Benji, Fred, and Berean, we looked to our left, bro, and we seen a mob of people, bro. I'm talking about like wow. 20 to 30 people, bro. Wow. They pulled up and there was all ages, young, young, young men, older women, older men, younger women, like, like a whole, like a mob, bro, of the people, I guess, that were there doing the rituals, like the people who actually like practiced the witchcraft, the, the Santa Muerte. And they're wilding out. Put the camera down. Who like like bro like square like I'm talking about like in our face, bro. Like one of, even one of the younger kids, wow. probably like 13, 12 years old, even smacked my phone and was like, "Yeah, put it." Away. And I'm like, "Bro, what?" And I immediately I was like, "Bro, I'm gonna call the cops. Like this is this is stupid. Like you yeah, like this is this is this is crazy. I'm gonna call the cops." You know, back in the world. I was one of those dudes. I'm not calling the cops for nothing. You know what I'm saying? But now that I'm in Christ, bro, I understand that the, that we are supposed to abide by the governing laws of the land. God uses the authorities, mm -hmm. you know, for, for a purpose. And, uh, you know, we're and four and they're like 30. We don't want to fight. We're Christians, bro. Like, I'm a pastor. Like, me and Pastor Benji are pastors. Like, we're not trying to fight anybody. We're not there for that smoke, bro. Like, we're just, we're trying to get our content and dip. And they started wilding out, like, you're calling the pigs. And, and, like, bro, they had this hatred in their eyes, bro, like, for us and the, and the cops that, like, I I was, like, so in shock, like, how quickly they turned up. And I knew, we knew, like, it was obviously demonic. And, bro, like, bro, a dude came and pulled out a knife, literally, bro. And, and like, and we're not going to play that part of the video where he pulled out the knife. But he pulled out a knife, bro. And literally, like, threatened us, bro. Like, and it wasn't like a little switchblade. It was like a custom-made big old knife. Like, pulled it wow. out. Like, he, and, and I was like, okay, now we're taking it to another level where we have to defend ourselves. And the cops were like, exit the premises immediately. Exit immediately. And then that's when, bro, because we were surrounded, that's when, you know, we were like, yo, what's up? Like, we squared up and like, we thought we were going to have to fight. And to be honest, they had way more people than us, bro. We would just... 
like logically the energy level like we wouldn't have been able to beat them all but um we didn't want to fight though that wasn't our heart bro and you know we we had to repent later but you know that's when um we saw you know, one of the young men he started running man went over the fence like yo i'm gonna get the gang members like the i guess the higher ranking gang members and i was like bro what is going on and then some other brother pulled up like yo what's up and i don't and he looked like a straight like you know like like a like a gang member like a vato right and i'm like bro what is going on like this is this is crazy and i'm like okay bro wow. like we don't want drama. Like, we're here to record and get content. Like, how is this a religion of peace? And that's when they kind of, like, slowed down. And they were like, the, one of the women there that she was the main one wilding out, instigating everything. She was the main one, bro, in the front instigating everything. This older woman. That's what she was like, no, dude, we're about peace, too. And I'm like, how is this peace, though? You threaten us with a knife. You want to beat us up. You're smacking our phone. Like, how is this peace? Then they kind of calmed down a little bit. And that's when, you know, when we saw the kid jump the fence, that's when Fred was like, yo, we got to go, bro. Let's get out of here. We you know we we just abided by what the you know law enforcement told us to do. We dipped. We got in the Tahoe. They followed us all the way to the Tahoe, bro. It was. I even like literally apologized to like the 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 head dude, like the one that was. He just looked like he was part of the gang. I apologized, like, hey, bro, like I'm sorry. Like if we caused anything, like we were just here. I'm just telling you the truth. And we weren't the only ones recording. There was another couple there that was recording as well. And I was like, bro, like, this is crazy. And he was just like, it's all good, man. Go. He was he was very respectful, respectable at the end of the day. And we did, bro. And the cops, the authorities met us, you know, at the McDonald's. And they explained to us, bro, that that like Barrio Logan has literally like the highest, like, or like with the highest ranking gang in San Diego. And people out there, bro, like have been held up to gunpoint. There's been deaths and murders and all types of, and I'm like, and he was like, yeah, that the, the, no one snitches because everyone's so close knit. And I'm like, bro, thank you, Jesus, like for his protection. Cause I was like, bro, that was crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. It was crazy, bro. Wow. And you know, they were like, oh, do you want to file charges? Cause we got, we got it on video. You know, the man who pulled out the knife and I was like, nah, bro, we're good. We don't want to, you know, you know, we don't want to press charges. It's all good. Let them do their thing, bro. Like it is what it is. And we just let it go. And we prayed for them. You know, that the Lord would just reveal himself to them and that they would find the peace of God, the love of God. And, you know, we repented for even, you know, considering to fight, bro. And we were just like, you know, wow. Like, it was it was like some mod it was like some biblical stuff, bro. You know, when Paul would go into different areas and get thrown out. You know what I'm saying? It was Man. like, we felt like we were like living the Bible. But any, anyways, bro, what I want to do is play a, play a part of it so you guys can see, you know, how real it was. You know, the altars and just the altercation. Um, we're not going to play the part when he pulled out the knife only out of out of respect for what we agreed on, which is to not, you know, you know, um, press charges. And because we know people can clip up the video and try to do it themselves. So, um, um, Kevin, you got it smooth where it's not in there. It's not in there. OK, so we're going to play this video. Y'all start. Y'all start going ham in the um, in the chat. Put fire emojis like the video. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kevin, play that thing. Look, this is this is literally witchcraft. This is voodoo, bro. Look, they're putting. Bro, we don't respect this at all in the name of Jesus Christ. We don't respect none of this. This is sad, bro. This is a day of the dead celebration. We had no idea. Look at this is they, they, they're doing witchcraft in this stuff. Right now, the kingdom of God comes with power. We close every demonic portal. We rebuke every demonic spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. We do the altar each year, so that's okay. That's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, I don't know what y'all doing, man. Y'all need, need to chill out for real. Y'all need to chill out for real. Hey, don't, don't touch the camera, bro. Yeah, chill out, bro. Touch the camera. You can't, you can't, you can't touch us like this, bro. Hey, bro. Tell hey, more reason why you gotta go. Hey, chill out. Stop. 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 Let's be out right now. Right now. Right now. Right no, no, right now. Buddy you just ran over there on some gun talk. We about to be out. That's the busy. Let's go. Let's go. Man. I'm gonna tell you this. That's only a portion of it, bro. It got there's a lot more people and there's and it got way more real than that. But um I'm glad that you clipped it up like that, Kevin. Just out of you know respect. For not trying to go too much, but hey, bro, the wow. altars were wow, crazy. Wow, wow. It was, bro, it was it, like what you guys saw those little altars. It was, just imagine a bunch of them all over the park. It was like all over, bro. And Berean was kind of like with the camera, you know, like trying to like he didn't know what to do. So like, but bro, there was <laughs> a lot more people, bro. And the dude pulled out the knife, all that, man. It was crazy, bro. It was crazy. Like they wow. weren't playing. Like they, they were, bro, like threatening us. Like they were about to, you know, make some moves. And we got yeah, die hard, huh? 
I said, those guys are diehard devotees, bro. followers. And when we were bro, praying, yeah. I was like, that's, that, that's what we said. We were like, Lord, like save them. Because, bro, if they were working for the Lord, like if they were in Christ, bro, they would be, bro, yes. mighty prophets, evangelists, apostles, pastors, teachers. They would be, bro, they would be winning souls, bro. And that's, that's right. what we prayed for. We were like, man, because like, bro, like they're so young and seeing like all that witchcraft and being involved in the gang activity, like, and, and, and it's crazy because Pastor Benji actually prophesied over one of the kids that was turning up the most. He looked at him like when they, like they squared up and he was like, you know what, bro? You're going to be a mighty man of God. You're going to do great in school. You're going to go to college. You're not. And like the dude, like the kid was like, went from like all crit to like looking at him like, wow. what the heck? Because, <laughs> you know, he started speaking life over him. And, and, wow. and man, it just, it was very surprising, bro. It was just like. It was something we never experienced, so it was like, wow, like this is the first time we've seen somebody like really tee up like that. That's why we got to pray a, for these people, man. Like, what do you, what do you feel, Pastor? Yes, but it's a viol it's a violent religion because that's what it is. It's it's a religion. It's actually, it's uh from what I heard, it's actually the fastest growing religion in the Western Hemisphere. The fastest growing right now, the Santa Muerte, tw ten to twenty million followers. Just, yeah, it's wow. it's huge. Yeah, and, and and we know that they, you know, it's the cartel, you know, the cartel love the Santa Muerte. That's their God, you know. They they literally pray, pray to her. They have all types of candles for her. But they don't black man. candle for, for vengeance. That's the thing is like the red candle for love, all that weird stuff. <laughs> and, and this is what I want to say. I'm gonna say this. We love, look, because I know there's gonna be people that watch this that practice it, probably cartel, probably people that are in it. I'm gonna say this, look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really, really look like I want put put it, the screen on me alone for a second. Deacon Kevin, I want to really say something and zoom in. Can you zoom in or no? Zoom in because I want them to see my face. OK, so again, I come from witchcraft, from voodoo, from Santeria, from shamanism, from many different forms of witchcraft. OK. I've studied Islam, I've studied Buddhism, I've studied Catholicism, I've studied many different religions. I've studied the Palladian beings, the Anunnaki, the Inki, the Enil, the extraterrestrial, the Egyptian. I've studied many different things, many. And the one thing that I know for sure, look, this isn't about me or you, right? Physically. Me, you, it ain't about us. It's about the spiritual. So this is what I say to everybody. If the God that you worship is that powerful ask that god about jesus ask that god about jesus ask that deity about jesus and i will say this i'm not against the people i ain't trying to fight nobody i don't i don't want to shoot at nobody i don't want to have no beef with nobody i say this i will put jesus our god up against any god with no problems my family and i sleep great at night my family and I are doing amazing. We're, we're pushing the kingdom. We have the peace that, man, we've never had. Um, love, joy, all that. We are, we're happy. And I'll say this. God wants to give you that same peace, love, joy, and happiness. God does not want you sacrificing onto a deity that claims to be good, but requires death, requires pain, requires these the candy, like these different things. That's not what God, Yahweh, Jehovah requires. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be a perfect sacrifice for all of us. Yeshua, he's the only way. When you give your life to him, there's no more rituals. There's no more, like, you don't have to do that no more. We don't have to go and sacrifice animals and goats and lambs and, and candy and, and food and this and that. We don't have to do that no more. We go straight to God, and now our life is a living sacrifice unto the Lord, following right. him, worshiping him, loving him. And, bro, the presence of God is something that I never experienced in any form of witchcraft. I've been into Muslim mosques, and I've asked Muslims, have you ever spoke to God, your God, Allah? Have you ever had a conversation? Have you ever experienced the, Allah's presence? And they'll tell you no. They don't even know if they're going to make it to heaven. They say if we do a bunch of good works, it'll outweigh the bad. They don't even know. Jesus Christ did what he did, perfect, sinless man, God incarnate. God came down into a vessel to be perfect for you and I so that there'd be the, he'd be the last and final sacrifice. Now through him, we're forgiven for all our sins, every sin we've committed and will commit as long as we believe in our heart. If we believe in our heart, you will, we will truly follow him. 
there's, there's a lot of people in, in different, not even just the Catholic Church, the Baptist, the Pentecostal, non-denomination. There's many people who say, I believe in Jesus, but they don't follow him in their heart. They don't. Because when you believe in Jesus, you're going to follow his ways. The Bible says, if you love me, follow my commandments. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have the power to, go, to flee from fornication, the power to, 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 to not get drunk anymore. Look, I used to be an alcoholic. I used to be murderous. I used to be angry, rageful, rejected, depressed. I used to have all these demons, and the Lord delivered me from every demonic spirit. I've seen people who are bipolar and schizophrenic come to the church, get delivered from demons because the power of God is real. And yes, are there hypocrites in the body of Christ or in the in church, in the Christian community? Yes, there are. Of course, there's hypocrites everywhere. There's, there's, there's people who are truly sell, sold out for Santa Muerte. And then there's the ones who say they believe in Santa Muerte, but they don't really believe too. Like there's, there's lukewarms everywhere. But let me tell you something. For everyone that watches this, Jesus Christ loves you. It ain't about me. It ain't about Pastor Mario. It's about Jesus. Do what I did and ask. Be like highest power. Whoever you are, reveal yourself. That's all I... Look, for the people who are like sold out to Santa Muerte, sold out to their religion, sold out to whatever it is, Islam, Buddhism, just go alone. Go Come somewhere on. like I did. I did this on the island of Crete in Greece in 2016 or 2017. I was alone. I was alone. My friends were in the club getting drunk and high, and I went to the beach. And I remember it was like a whole movie scene. It was dark and everything with the moonlight, and I was depressed. I had been sober for two months from alcohol. I was like, man, what is going on? This sucks. Like, I, I need alcohol. Like, I need, I, I need these things to feel good. This isn't normal. And I literally said, highest power, whoever you are, they are, she are, it are. I didn't know what the highest power was. I said, reveal yourself. Show me who you are. Show me who you are. And I heard a voice in my ear say, I'm going to show you now. Like, I'm going to show you now. Wow. Like, now you're going to know. And I, and I remember just like, am I tripping? Did I just hear that? And man, God took me through a sequence of events, allowed me to go study every religion, every practice, all of it that you can name. I'll say this, most, almost every, everything I needed to practice. And bro, I had no peace and no fulfillment until I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus. He delivered me. He healed me. He gave me love and joy and peace. I mean, it's the best thing I ever, it's the Come best on. decision I've ever made the same thing happened to Pastor Mario. You can put Pastor Mario back on. The same thing happened to Pastor Mario, like like he said in the hotel room, about to kill himself from the from the you know about, about to die from the cocaine, and two and man, times. And two times. And God sent people. God stopped. God stopped him from doing that because God, the Bible says he loved he loved us before we even knew him. Yep. So all you practicing Santa Muerte, tarot cards, going to psychics, mediums, going to, you know, using evil eyes for protection or crystal, you don't need that stuff. You don't need to keep doing these rituals and giving candy and giving this. Yeah. These, are, these, are, these are demonic fallen angels that all they want to do is kill you, steal from you, and destroy your life. Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost. Right. Ask Come yourself, on. for all these people that are, that are, that are, that are look at, please, look, for all the people that are practicing Santa Muerte, because they're probably pissed at me, mad, probably want to kill me and Mario. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. But I'll tell you this. If Santa Muerte is that powerful and that good, take a look at your family. Is your family living good? Come on. Look at your friends. Look at your life. Are you really living a life that you want to live? I say this all the time because when I was in witchcraft, everything was chaotic. Everything was Ask yourself, because look, you might be the one like the brother has the car, you got the money. And look, let me tell you something. I know you probably getting people who come to you that do rituals and that's how you're getting the money. You're supposed to be a pastor. Remember, it's perversion. The Bible says that's a worker right. is worthy of his wages. God takes care of his people who preach the gospel, who live by the gospel, who that's their job. Yes, God takes care of them. Yes, and, and the kingdom of God supports those who do that. Because they're ordained by God to do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the devil perverts it and has you doing all these rituals and doing these readings, using the gifts that God has give, given you, because the, the Bible says the gifts are without repentance. He'll never take them away, and you're using it for the dark side, and you're hearing from Santa Muerte, which is a demon, to get put witchcraft on people and more control. Think about the people you're doing witchcraft for. Yeah, that he gets out of prison and probation. Yeah, they get that lover. But think about, like... Think about what happens to them afterwards. Is it ever just a happy ending? Is it ever just, oh, they got peace and love now? And they're, no, they all they, now they're 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 worse than they were before. Think about the people That's who right. come for the love spells. Does it ever end up good? Come on, bro. Be real with yourself. Be real with yourself. 
This is logic. You don't have to even be filled with the Holy Spirit to know this is cap. It's cap. And I say, and I, I get, I'm not against the people. I don't, look, I could care less. If you want to go worship Santa Muerte, Legba, Chango, Allah, Buddha, aliens, be my guest. But one day you are going to have to meet your maker, Jesus Christ, and you will be judged. And one sin sends you to hell. You need the blood to wash you, and that is by giving up everything and following Christ. That's the only way you can make it to heaven. That's and right. it's the best decision you ever make. Praise God. Pastor Martin, anything else you want to say? Man, yeah, man, you said it all. But you know, one thing I, I do remember is that a lot of people they they say once you start, you can't, you can't, you know, you mm. can't stop. And and that that's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. As long as there's breath in your lungs today, if you feel like God is tugging at your heart, you know, through this podcast, if you feel like, man, this is messages for me, uh, you know, you're worshiping La Santa Muerte, but you're scared. You feel like something's bad is going to happen to you or your family. It's a lie. God is your protector. He will, he will, he will protect you. He will provide. He'll be your rock. You know, he's the most, he's the highest power. These other demons are nothing. They're, they're, they're nothing. Jesus has defeated it all. So stop buying into that lie. Amen. Come on. And it's not about religion. It's about relationship. It's about knowing Yeshua, Jesus. It's about, you know, following his word. The G I'm, ta I'm talking about the Jesus of the Bible. And, you know, mm. people say the whole thing like, oh, the Bible's been this and that. Look, go, go study it. The archaeological proof, the historical proof, the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's so much uh, like proof that proves the textual authenticity of the word of God. And the word of God is alive and we see it in our everyday life. You know, God moving mightily and his word having power, man. Man, we mm -hmm. have the power to cast out demons. We don't got to do a ritual to cast out. To, to and look, and, and in witchcraft, when they say they're casting out a demon, they're not casting out a demon. They're not casting out a demon because the person never gets freed. They just manifest and then they go back to their vomit. They, they, they go back to their issues. And in Christianity, with the, with the Holy Ghost, as a follower of Jesus, you see people, cat, get that demon come out, they throwing up, coughing up, whatever it is, and they, they're they completely changed. They feel peace. That area of their life is just is just is eradicated, is taken out because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So, amen, man. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Is Thank there, you. Thank you for it, having me, man. Hey, you already know, man. Is there anything else that you want you want to tell the people before we get off? No, no. We said it all, I feel. And, um, yeah. I, re I appreciate being on this platform, man. It's awesome. And uh, I really hope that people, you know, that you, you won't see the, us judging you. We're not judging you like like Apostle said. We're actually just trying to bring, you know, light. We're just trying to bring the truth so that you'll be set free. Amen. 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 So, yes, um, in the description of this video, we're going to have um, Pastor Mario's YouTube link, the, the, the link to his YouTube channel. Y'all go subscribe, go watch all his videos, like them, comment on them, go share them. He's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. He's on TikTok. Go find him, man. Powerful ministry. Again, if you're in the DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas area, go check out Kingdom Come, Prayer Mountain. It's in Dallas. It's a powerful ministry. The power of God is moving. If you need deliverance, if you need healing, if you just, if you want to get baptized, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, if you want to give up your witchcraft items, look, he, you know, Pastor Mario is a type of guy, come as you are. He's not a religious Amen. pastor. He's a come as you are pastor. Pastor Mar, you're 32 years old, right? 32. 32 right. years old, young man of God, you know, and and he's he's not he's not judgmental. He's not going to judge you because you come dressed a certain way. Come dressed however you want, and bring those witchcraft items. Bring all of them. Bring the weed, cigarettes, vapes, alcohol, witchcraft items. Bring everything to the altar and surrender it. And, and expose Amen. the devil, man. Expose darkness so more people can get freed out of this deception. Bring those crystals. Bring the sage. Bring the tarot cards. Bring all of that and get rid of it, man, so we can bring glory to God and revival can break out and people can truly get saved and filled with the love of their creator. In Jesus' name, Amen. I appreciate you, Pastor, and I Amen. love you, bro. Thank you, man. And I thank love you for you, coming on. And I pray that this Amen. video touches the nations, bro, onto the glory yes, of God. Yes, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right, guys. Amen. Love you guys. God bless.